Hey guys, welcome back today. I want to make a new kind of video. Over the weekend I have taken part in a tournament in which I reached top 8. It was a tournament with over 100 players which were was played online. By the way guys, if you want to, to play these kind of tournaments then you can also do that. I want to show you in this video which deck I have used, uh, which uh, deck I have used in the top 16 match because uh, in uh, the matches you are able to change your deck between uh, the different games. Also in the top 16 match so that was quite nice it was a really cool experience and i just want to tell you if you want to take part in a tournament you can easily do that there is a discord server that you can join i will try to get the uh, discord link in uh, the description i'm not the biggest uh, discord expert but i will manage guys i will put it in the description you can join the server and there you can find all the tournaments that take place over the week and the entry is free which is quite nice because you can also win prizes so i have for example one i think a game mat and two packs of sleeves but uh, in a tournament where there are 512 players so a really big one obviously but the first place also gets a steam deck which is priced at 900 euros so that's quite cool uh, it was really fun you um, everything is organized over discord you meet your opponents over discord um, nothing really that you that you need there it's it's totally fine if you have your master rule account if you have a discord account and that's all you need to basically go and participate so if you want to i have the link to the discord server in which you can find all the tournaments for the upcoming week in uh, the description also guys a quick little note here um, sometimes the um, the tournaments are full already uh, the max number of participants are already there don't you worry because um, in every instance that i took place in a tournament there were also places that were like opened up um, before the event like half an hour before the event because some people didn't like come to the check-in or weren't available on discord so uh, they were basically kicked out of the tournament and the places were given to other people so uh, over the last few week or, or in the last uh, week i have played three tournaments two were with um, like three rounds of swiss and the bigger one that i finished top eight in um, was with six um, no seven rounds of swiss so swiss basically meaning that you always meet another opponent and then if you are one zero then you're facing another guy who is one zero until the point that they're basically uh, only a few guys left that are undefeated and then the top 16 were able to get into the top 16 and funnily enough i finished five and two i won my first four games and then lost two and then won one again and the last one i won i won in overtime my opponent basically had the game won um, but i had higher life points so overtime rules is if the overtime is 20 minutes if the time has expired then you look at the life points and the person with more life points wins the game automatically if they have the same life points then they will continue on a turn to turn basis so you will play until the end of your turn and if then there is a difference in life points the person with the higher life points wins so i was really lucky there in the last round and then i got the 16th place in the top 16 so the last place available i was i think the only five and two guy that made it to top 16 so really lucky um, played and won my top 60 match but unfortunately then um, was kicked out in the top 8 match also because I've made some mistakes that I want to talk about in this deck. So what did I play? I did play Labyrinth Furniture or Furniture Labyrinth. I was thinking about playing poorly and in the top, um, what was it, in the top 16 and also top 8 match I also played one game of poorly each. Um, but yeah, this is the list um, that I've used. I found this on Master Duel Meta. This is a Master 1 list that I've copied um, I find it really nice. It worked really well. Uh, one thing that is important to note in the Swiss portion of the tournament, um, there are best of one games. So winning a game, you continue and get a point. If you lose, then you get rewarded zero points, obviously. Um, so that's the thing about these tournaments in the other two tournaments this week that i participated in uh, there were only three rounds of swiss right so after after being after losing one game i was already aware of the fact that i would not reach the top cut because you would have to finish 3-0 to reach the top cut so the cool thing is that in these shorter tournaments i was only playing like one or two rounds until i lost a round and then i basically dropped and left the tournament obviously you can still play the tournament until the end but you can also leave if you see that you will not make top 
top cut if that is um, the thing that you want to achieve. Also in the other tournament I was uh, aware that I would need around a 5-2 score and then have a bit of luck. Uh, I was also aware that a 6-1 and one score would get me into top cut. Um, so you can just try, you can just uh, start the tournament and if you then um, get uh, two losses or maybe one loss, two losses, three losses depending on the size of the tournament. Obviously in a 512 player tournament you probably could also go three losses and still make it. So um, yeah, you can just play and if you have lost a certain amount of time then you can just leave if you want to. So it isn't even a big time investment. You can just make it from the comfort of your home. The rounds are quick as I said to 20 minutes and then there's uh, a little like time in between like 15 minutes until the next round starts. So you can go make yourself uh, something to eat and that's that's it's just fun. It's just relaxing. I also play TCG paper events uh, which are definitely more stressful but are a different kind of fun I have to say. So this is the list I used and then in the top 8 and top 16 I also when I knew I was going second because obviously when I got first and won the game then my opponent could then choose what uh, whether he wanted to go first or second and when I knew that I was going second I switched up the labyrinth furniture list to a more going second variant. You can see there are evenly matched in here. Uh, there was no side text so you could uh, potentially just switch off the entire deck. So if you have Numor for example or Mikanko as going second strategies you could also just take them and uh, if you know you're going second take these going second strategies. I put in Nib. Um, what's more I changed here. Yeah I think that's basically it evenly matched yeah so this is what i changed here uh, it worked well and i also want to show you the two top eight games that i have uh, recorded because those were really amazing games i was also playing poorly and i faced a lot of rank link this is the poorly list i used at the time uh, in the top eight i was able to make a really big ex poorly noir unfortunately my opponent had a kaiju and could then kill me he was also playing dragon link if for some reason in the second match i decided to switch to my MathMag deck, which I thought, okay, I have not played MathMag in this tournament, so nobody knows that I might bring it. But obviously, I wasn't thinking about the fact that Dragon Link has a lot of bestials, and bestials are not that great for the MathMag deck. So I ended up with a, in a bit of a, a bad situation, um, given the fact that he was able to bestial my important light monsters from the graveyard. So for your like strongest play in the deck, you your math max super factorial. You need three different math max that you put into your graveyard on your first turn: the diameter, the circular, and uh, most likely the sigma. This also gives you a negate on your super factorial play. But Abyssal is able to just take this, get it out of the grave, banish it, and then yeah, I unfortunately lost uh, zero to to my top eight match. But it was super fun. Um, it was on a Saturday. I think it started around eleven o'clock, and I was finished at around uh, sixteen thirty. So around about five hours, I would say. And obviously, if I would have continued in this tournament, I would have played even longer. So let me just check for the games. Yeah, so this is the first one that I played against my top 16 Dragon Link player. I just want to go over the games because I think they were quite fun. Um, they were quite uh, skill expressive also. Not all of them, obviously. Um, and just a quick mention before we start in here. Also a lot of matches I, I have to say. So so the mind game when, when playing a tournament is as follows. So sometimes you will just be unlucky, right? I have in the Swiss part, I have won a lot of coin flips, could go first a lot of times. So there will also be times in which you don't win the coin flip, go second a lot of times and then maybe just be out of the tournament quite quickly. Um, it's just just chill let, let let your hand come look at what you have try to try to play the best round that you can and then sometimes so so to consistently win these tournaments you obviously need skill i have talked about this in the lesson video skill is an important factor but obviously also you need luck and luck consists of you winning the coin toss or of you drawing a hand that you can do something with because if you win the coin toss going first and then you have a brick hand then it's also bad but those are these luck factors that are always present if you like I take place on, or, or participate in three tournaments over the week then if you're a good player it's it's not unlikely that you can finish in the top cut somewhere. So he started with his Dragon Link plays and as you can see we have an Imperm here and a Psyframe Gear Gamma and I really found a nice spot to interrupt him here. Um, 
So the Black Metal Dragon package is a new package this Dragon Link is playing basically and he goes for the Red Eyes Darkness Metal Dragon. I was really thinking about where I wanted to Psy Frame Gamma him but I was okay. I was thinking I will Gamma him here because he will now resummon this guy who can then get even more advantage. The good thing about Gamma is that he not also um, negates this but also destroys this. And as you can see right here he also has used up his normal summon so I was thinking okay he would need one or more likely two extenders to be able to play from here so I used the Gamma here um, negating uh, the Red Eyes Darkness Metal and then he cannot revive. He had to pass over as you can see he has an Ash um, but that's everything. In the end phase I decided to go, or also has the Gamma, sorry, uh, to go for the uh, Stovi Torby to have an active big welcome on my turn but he Gammas me which um, that was obviously a bit rough um, but it's good that it was during the end phase because now he cannot use this package to go into for example a Baron de Fleur because I think a Baron would have killed me here. So he has an Ash which is really good against Labyrinth. I'm drawing and uh, go to the main and <laughs> here I make a funny play. This is definitely risky and I think this ended up biting me in the ass. So what I wanted to do obviously is get this back to hand so I can use it next turn but I also wanted to go big welcome, get the um, lady on the field so I can destroy a card so then my interruptions would have been destroy a card either in hand or on field and I also have the impermanence to negate something right but for that to be able to happen I need a monster on the field so this is why I needed to play my maxi and obviously if I get to resolve this I will get the maxi back to hand right but in my head the idea was okay if he has an ash which he had then I'm in really bad shape but I was like okay I guess I have to to risk it honestly so he goes magna mood banishes my Stovi Torby, which makes sense, he can search something afterwards and also I won't get my Stovi Torby back. Now I obviously don't attack anymore, pass over to him and um, yeah, I think I let him go to, okay, I just go for the big welcome here, he ashes me and I'm basically like, okay, this round is over probably because now I have no place. Um, I just let it play, I just let it play out a bit because I want to see where he can get, but obviously he can go Romulus and has this, I can negate this, but he also has the boot sector launch, he has a nice normal summon that he can use, has extension via the chaos dragons, and at this point I was like, okay, doesn't really matter, he can go into Boral End or something and I only have a max C. Nothing I can do here and I think at this point somewhere I scooped, he can also revive something here, and yeah. This was also game on field, I think. So, unfortunately, losing my first game, which was already a bit sad, but I was like, okay, let's go. I, I, can, I can manage it. And I knew that I will go first now. So I switched up decks and went poorly here because I was thinking if I can get a big uh, ex Noir out, it will be very rough for him to beat this because Dragon Link basically only has the Underworld Goddess. And as you can see, he has no interruptions here, which this is quite nice for me. I start with the street, then go and note here, I definitely made the mistake of not playing in draw phase. Um, yeah, playing draw phase, it's better. Uh, it plays around draw and lock, but of course. I play the street, then go for the poor Lily, which um, I always like to do this um, when I already have my friend and the other. So so the thing is, I, I can't go into anything else, right? I have the my friend, I have the uh, street, I have Yeep. So there's nothing really that I need to search with the poor Lily. So I was like, okay, just let's go poor Lily. Maybe he ashes me here, I don't know. Doesn't really matter, so I search the poor Li because I still have a normal summon and searching a normal summon is quite nice. That's what I'm going for next. I am unfortunately going to miss here. My friend poor Li can now get me the delicious memory uh, which obviously I want to go into a big noir as I already said. Um, wait what was my plan? Oh I already have used the delicious memory it was in my hand okay then obviously after you already have your delicious memory in the cycle then you want to go sleepy memory so you can draw on your opponent's turn this is even more important if you have the trap the yeep here so I am discarding the yeep because at this point I have calculated that I will be able to go into a five material ex noir so I can go delicious then I can attach two of these um, and then I'm only missing one but I will get an additional um, look at the top three from poorly and then I will also get uh, an additional search with the where is he with the Sylvan Princess Pride. So I was thinking okay the the likelihood of me being able to make uh, ex noir on my turn is very high. So 
I'm uh, revealing here and I'm getting another sleepy, which this is quite nice because now I can just go into the delicious memory. And one thing here to note, and you will see this, I will activate this now to get more cards under it. There's also another sleepy. And now I'm, I'm at four summons, right, because of Nibiru. So what I'm doing first here is I activate this and make the big Expo Linois because the Expo Linois is now unaffected and now you could go and make the Princess Pride or uh, at this moment I didn't have it in my deck but it's way better. The, um, the Nightingale, the Robin Nightingale would have been better here of course. So let's let's say you, you want to make your Expo Linois first, fifth summon because this cannot be Nibiru now anymore and then you can use your two remaining Purulis to either go into the Princess Pride or the Robin. I'm just going to look at the top card, getting a triple tag, that's on. Um, that's all right. And then obviously putting another Sleepy under here. So I have triple Sleepy now. This is quite nice. He goes quick launch and goes Sauronia. And uh, this is always nice. Keep uh, the trap in the grave because you can just reshuffle your little guys back into the deck if they uh, get targeted by the Bestials. So this is what I did here. Shuffling it back so I already was aware of the fact that one card in his hand is basically useless, the Sauronia. He goes for this and I decide to draw three. If so, so I definitely was thinking about spinning something back, but the thing is that he can just use quick effect, destroy this and then get something back on the field. So it's always difficult to interact with this rocket tracer because of its quick effect. Though keep in mind, he will by using the quick effect, lock himself into dark monsters from the extra deck. Okay. I wanted to draw more cards, but he realized that he can't out this. And I have also uh, seven materials, so three, three sandbags. So he just scooped. And then I, once again, was aware of the fact that I was probably going second, and that was the case. So I told him, okay, uh, or he told me that he wanted to go first, and I went to my uh, Labyrinth going second version here. Had a nice hand, Maxi, Nibiru, and Drone and Lockbird. So I go Maxi in the draw phase, um, which is already bad for him. He just passes over to me, and then in the end, I go Chandra Glear, uh, discard the Nibiru because I don't need it anymore. The Drone Lockbird is definitely more valuable. I was thinking a bit here, but in the end, I decided to, to place a big welcome. I obviously have one in hand, but. I just can't place it next turn but cannot activate it and I wanted an active big welcome level for next turn. Using my draw and lockboard to bounce it if I don't draw another minion, which I think I don't, I go pot here. Drawing two cards, then I can really nice cards, right? Because this is an extra special summon, this is the best normal summon. I can go Ariana, can get the lady, lady now can be summoned and then I can also chain the lady. He goes Maxi, which um, I'm like, okay, that's that's fine for me. Um, I decide, so I have activated this already, right? And the plan was to activate this, bring it to field, then activate this, chain this to set an additional trap. But I was like, okay, I want to give him um, the least amount of cards that I have to. So in response to his maxi, which is chaining two, I decided to give up the extra card from the lady that I would have gotten chaining it if it was on the field. Um, with the extra trap that I would have gotten from this, I would have um, given him another hand card that I didn't want to do. So I chained it here to destroy one hand card. I think I go for the lady to destroy one of his hand cards. Lady is always nice because you can reset your big welcome. Spinning this back so I can use it next turn. This goes to the field, he draws one and now destroy one in the hand. Also this comes back to the hand. He goes and targets the Chandraglia, so I can't get it back to hand. I can't really stop this, so it gets banished. Saunir goes to the field and I destroy the Red Ace Darkness. Then because the monster effect was used, I can banish this, which this is quite nice because Saronia won't activate in the banish pile. And then I can also reset my big welcome. And at this point, uh, it's really nice. I can do a bit of damage. I have a drawn in Lockbird. I have a big welcome. I can chain this. So, so the cool thing here is that he goes banish Nibiru to get another Bistil on the field. I was like, okay, that's all right. At this point, I was quite sure that I will win the game. The cool thing that you can do here is you can use the big welcome to summon the Ku Clock, then you can bounce back the Ku Clock. And um, after activating the big welcome, you would obviously chain the lady. Lady could then get you any trap you want to the field. And because you have bounced your Ku Clock back to hand, you can then activate this trap this turn. So for example, if this would have been a pearly matchup, I could have gotten a dimensional barrier calling XYZs and that would have been game. But we will see that this also will be game in a moment. I let him go main phase, 
here goes battle phase, tries to battle over my Fenrir. I decide to bounce back my Fenrir, I think. I chain this now. I think I bounce back the Fenrir, right? Set Dogmatic Punishment. I think I go for the Ku Clock, that's right. Um, and then I drop the Ku Clock here to have my punishment ready. I could have waited with the Ku Clock um, drop to the graveyard, definitely. I destroy this now. And now the situation is that he has a normal summon left. And I have uh, the Fenrir effect live. I also have a Dogmatica punishment, which I can use in. Uh, cooperation with my elder entity to destroy two cards basically so even if he would have gotten into something like black metal dragon into the other metal dragon then metal dragon summon something from the graveyard i still could have destroyed two cards so really good situation here he activates Sauronia but then realizes that this game is over and he scoops. I was chatting uh, with him afterwards, really nice guy, I also told him about the YouTube channel. But yeah, so top 16, nothing too special, really played the, tops, uh, the top 8, sorry, top 8 match, uh, played it really badly. Um, but all in all, it was super fun. I'm getting prizes now. It was it was amazing. If you also are into being competitive, uh, trying to to get the most out of it, and trying to to climb to master one to play a tournament, if this is something that vibes with you, then I can only only suggest you try this for yourself. As I already said, I will put the link in the description if I can manage that, but I think I will. Uh, yeah, that's all for this tournament recap. I hope you liked it, hope you found it interesting. Let me know in the comments what you think. Also, if you want to support the channel, please hit the thumbs up, subscribe, and also notification bell, and we will see each other in the next one.